Welcome to the Joe Thomas in the Morning podcast, where we take highlights of the morning program on WCHV Radio in Charlottesville, Virginia, the second greatest city in the history of mankind. You can debate me if you want, and I'll stick up for her. That said, you may have missed some parts of the morning program. Sometimes I can't even listen for all four hours, and I'm the host. But that's okay. We put this together so you can go back in time, find things in context, and put together for you here on the podcast channel of WCHV.com. I'm CBS 19 meteorologist Jack Durkin for Seville 107.5 and 1260 WCHV. It is the cornerstone of American life, which, you know, was, uh, John O'Alcaro and Kate Acuff and their minions at the Albemarle County School Board may be against because they're trying to suckle up to the teat of the Reparational Socialist Party of Alexandria Occasional Cortex and Focahontas. But as of right now, Innocent until proven guilty is a core premise of this country. And your schools, the lion's share of you pay taxes into the Albemarle County schools, have opened yourself up to a nightmare. Your superintendent that your elected officials chose sent a letter home saying white supremacy hatred these are banned imagery what he wanted to clarify be clarified by being less transparent wearing of clothing i quote from dr haas's letter to the parents of the avocado county schools beginning march 12th and consider this a public service announcement from your humble radio show host just so you know what your kids should and shouldn't be wearing. And maybe send me your questions, 434-964-1075. Do you have a question? Is the depiction of Robin of Loxley, who was on the Crusades, is that offensive? I mean, the Crusades are considered by many to be the Eurocentric white supremacist invasion of the Holy Land. So could a picture of Kevin Costner as... Robin of Loxley from a movie of some time ago? Or is it okay because Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor by the depictions of, you know, the reparational socialists in the Albemarle School Board and the Albemarle Board of Supervisors? And what say their overlords who contribute 61 cents out of every tax dollar to the Avocado County Schools? What say Diantha McKeel? She used to be school, uh, school board chair. What say Liz Palmer? What say the outgoing Rick Randolph or... Hmm? What say? Do you have an opinion? What say Ann Malik on this? Now that it's clear, beginning Tuesday, March 12th, with the wearing of clothing with imagery associated with organizations that promote White supremacy, racial division. Now, and you see, here's where Dr. Haas sets himself up for a real legal problem. And I know uh, Sean Hannity's favorite lawyer is busy suing CNN for like $250 million for the defamation of the Covington school kids. But in the wake of this lawsuit against CNN and other media outlets for the way they treated the Covington High School kids, does Dr. Haas and his bosses at the Albemarle County School Board actually think this is a good plan? To make such an ambiguous judgment statement of what is and isn't permitted, um, Ken writes in through the smartphone app, what about a picture of the Pope? Yes, what if, what if the Holy Father, now, now you see, the Pope is controversial. Now, it depends on which Pope. If it's Pope Francis, why, he's a reparational socialist, so maybe he's okay. He's bought his way out of his Caucasianness. And he's South American Caucasian, which is, you know, they're, they're trying to get in through the border.
Should we just go with the Southern Poverty Law Center's list of what are hate groups? Or does the Albemarle County School Board take the famous line, I don't know what white supremacy is, but I'll know it when I see it, because there are MSNBC hosts and commentators that insist that just being Caucasian is white supremacy. What if a teacher calls on a white kid instead of a black kid to answer a question in math class? Is that white supremacy? Is that teacher facing rebuke? What if a white kid gets a higher grade than a black kid? Or a Latino kid? Is that white supremacy? Can, can that not be allowed now? Dr. Haas, at the behest of the Kate Acuffs and the John O. Alcaros of the world, goes on to write to the parents of the Albemarle County Schools. And you tell me, I mean, you tell me if you've got qualms about sending your kids or your grandkids to school, ask. We'll, we'll be to your answer man this morning at 434-964-1075. You call me, you tell me what you're thinking of sending your kid to school wearing, and I'll tell you whether or not I think it's it's white supremacist or not, or if it'll get them in trouble with the schools. What about a Gadsden flag? Hmm. What about a depiction of somebody on the Underground Railroad overcoming and escaping slavery? What about a picture of Harriet Tubman? I've been told that even mentioning the Underground Railroad is white supremacist because, well, connects back to race. What about a picture of Martin Luther King Jr.? Because if the Confederacy didn't happen, then what did we need Martin Luther King Jr. for? What was he fighting for? What if I come to school with a picture of Harry Bird on my t-shirt? Harry Bird, of course, for those who are thinking, what? who's Harry Bird? What, what are you talking about? Harry Bird has a very famous statue in front of the Virginia government headquarters, the General Assembly building, which was, of course, as many people know, also the capital of the Confederacy. Oh, that would be a t-shirt. Can somebody get to FedEx Kinko's right now and fire off a bunch of you know, let's get a picture of Harry Byrd standing in front of the Capitol of the Confederacy. Harry Byrd, of course, was the author of the Mass Resistance, in which he ordered all the Charlottesville schools to stay closed rather than to integrate at the order of the federal government. Harry Byrd was also a member of the General Assembly that passed the Virginia Sterilization Act of 1924, leading us to Buck versus Bell. What if you were to wear a T-shirt depicting Harry Bird's statue, which currently stands in front of a great Gothic Grecian white building that was also the capital of the Confederacy? What would that, Dr. Haas, could you tell me, would that be, is John Alcaro out there? I mean, I'll even take a call from Jason Buyanki on this. Because I know what his answer is. But you see, you all never send any help to Jason Buyaki because it was more important to worry about the next presidential election than who was running your school board. The Washington Capitals the in Central Virginia. The good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Let's go! Yeah. The true one, a high slot rebound. For Connor and he could get a backhand away. Copley was flailing. Thursday night at 7, will the Capitals experience any brotherly love? Odds are not against the Philadelphia Flyers. On Seaville 107.5 and 1260. WCHV. Smoking in the boys room. Smoking in the boys room. Now. Got this email from Dean that said, uh, my daughter uh, plays in a rival soccer league to soccer. What about that? And my son goes to the YMCA and other kids go to ACAC. Is that permitted? <laughs> See, you know, here's the lunacy of this. Uh, 
Albemarle County Schools ban on offensive imagery. As a parent, as a taxpayer that contributes to the budget, 61% we learn of the Albemarle County budget. Ironically, they announced yesterday they're also working on a diversity program. <laughs> That's just... The Albemarle County schools right now of John O'Alcaro and Kate Acuff and Graham Page and, yeah, even Jason Bianchi is complicit in this by, you know, the fact that you've left him there with very little, you know, backup. Sometimes Steve Colazar, you know, like the uh, metaphorical broken clock. Katrina Carlson. By the way, just as a quick note, I think tonight... Tonight's the night we'll make it. There is a school tax rate uh, town hall. And I believe, let me see if I can find it. You might be able to buttonhole at least two of the school board members at this uh, meeting tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the ticket. All right. So Tuesday, March 12th, town hall. Oh, this is a this is a double point score here, kids. We have a town hall going on tonight. Not only do you have former school superintendent Diantha McKeel, Ned Galloway, our supervisors, but also school board members Kate Acuff and Katrina Carlson are going to be at Jack Jewett Middle School Media Center. Maybe this would be a keen time for you to go and ask them what they think, because they're the ones that permit Dr. Haas to have this absolutely maniac, and and he is just begging for a lawsuit. He is begging for your tax dollars to go into somebody's pocket, but it's really simple. School uniforms fix this. Why Why can't they take the simple solution, which is school uniforms? Hi, this is Joe Thomas, and you know, sometimes you have to get out of Charlottesville to really enjoy the races. Look what I got here! No, 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 I mean the NASCAR races. In Martinsville Speedway, three different ways to win. On the smartphone app, through WCHV.com, or you listen at 7.20 each morning. We'll draw a winner from the entries sent in, and I'll tell you when to listen for this cue to call. From WCHV. What if your What if your grandpa has an old Winston Cup NASCAR T-shirt? Can you wear that to Albemarle Schools today? And if it sounds like I'm satirizing this, it's because it's a Oh, there's a word. Uh, there's a word for the Albemarle Schools policy regarding uh, free speech. Oh, yeah, stupid. And I'm not calling Doctor Haas stupid, but uh, there's there's a, a a series of posters meant to counteract all those motivational ones with the whale soaring the achievement. They're called demotivators. And the demotivator you can uh, buy that's uh, for meetings is together all of us are dumber than any one of us. And so this committee decision that Kate Acuff and Katrina Carlson, uh, who, by the way, are going to be at Jack Jewett Middle School tonight from 7 till 9, if you would like to give their ear hole a ringing over this, that would... I know they're supposed to be listening about tax uh, policy. Show up and give it to them anyway. If you think this is the height of dumbness, especially given that this is a school district that encompasses the home of Thomas Jefferson, it almost highlights and italicizes the dump. Graham Page, Steve Colazar, David Oberg, John O'Alcaro, the chairman and collectivist in chief. Poor Jason Bianchi, who's bailing against the tide as the lone conservative thinker on the school board. But you have a chance. You, yes, you have a chance. 
There are seats for election. The Rivanna district is an open district. Uh, Jason Buyaki has worn his arms out, bailing against the tide by himself. The Scottsville district and the Whitehall district. So Mr. Oberg's district, you know, the district he's in right now. Steve Colazar, what's he going to do? But you know, you can. These are the people who allow Dr. Haas to do this stuff, who insist he does this stuff. Remember, they were the ones holding a school board meeting when a Charlottesville school teacher kicked an Albemarle police officer in the groin. Is a picture of that considered offensive? What about a picture of Harry Byrd? the segregationist senator that has a statue out in front of the capital of the Confederacy in Richmond. This one comes in from Elliot. He says, all kidding aside, you realize the first instance that's going to be triggered on this, a middle school, (laughs) I expect a middle school student wearing Redskins gear will be the first to fall victim to Albemarle's PC overkill. We'll have the court filings and ready to go. The big irony, Rich writes in here, is our children can't do math. Subjugate a subjugate? You mean conjugate a verb? I think, <laughs> unless you mean subjugate a verb, maybe you're you're being intentionally Norm Crosbyish. Subjugate a verb or understand our Constitution. Well, there's a professor in South Carolina. University of South Carolina has a professor. No, pardon me. He's the, uh, he's the, the, I don't know if he's called the provost or the, I was just reading about this on the wires, has said that teaching the U.S. Constitution is unnecessary and arcane. But they can be forced to wear state-dictated fashion. Well, I didn't say forced, but isn't the isn't a school uniform? Is not a, a you know, it's Albemarle School. So what? Uh, navy blue and khaki. The boys and the girls. There you go. It's done. No more issue. I don't know if Dr. Haas is standing there with a list of hate groups from the Southern Poverty Law Center. I wonder if the black Israelites, or if he realizes that, uh, you know, care and, and the nation of Islam are on there. Jim writes into the Spring Creek line. Joe at WCHV.com. After hearing their list of offensive organizations or hate groups, I came to a quick conclusion that the Southern Poverty Law Center is indeed itself a hate group. Cheers. My favorite part of the Southern Poverty Law Center is the American uh, College. Is it American College of Pediatricians is on uh, on the list? So technically speaking, if you, if you got a t-shirt from the governor, it's the American College of Pediatricians is a hate group. So if you got a t-shirt from our governor, does that make you a hate group? Is the governor actually a member of a hate group because he's a pediatrician? You see how the dump just multiplies exponentially or subjugates exponentially. Hey, I tell you what, though, we're going to begin a campaign here on Joe Thomas in the morning. I have a box of of offensive symbols, the WCHV logo. If you want one for your kids' school books, let me know and I'll send it to you.